Hey everyone, Kevin here, and we are going to talk about how to use a packet of cards from your Christmas deck to make a Christmas gift box. This is a little origami project. You're going to need at least 21 cards. You might want to use 24. We'll talk about why the number later, but you're going to want to use at least 21 to make the box. Um, it's really pretty easy. There's just a couple of basic folds that you're going to need to do. You can use any 21. In this case, I'm going to have the cards um, where I'm going to use all of the backs facing out, but we'll talk about some other options there. So let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is take two cards and we're going to use this to build a wall. This is going to be a cube shaped box. So you're going to have six walls for around the side and one on top, one on bottom. And each wall is built the same way. So I grabbed a couple random cards here and you're going to want to orient them kind of like a plus sign. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold over these extending flaps. So you wanna have things centered and fairly straight. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if you're a little off, but you don't want it to be, you know, super crooked. Um, so as long as you're generally fairly straight with your folds, that's gonna be fine. And so on this, because I want both the outside and the inside of my box to show um, the back design, um, that's how I'm gonna have them. Now if you wanted to have your design, your faces on the outside or inside of your box, uh, you would fold them in that direction. So pay attention in that way to the orientation when you're building your walls, whether or not you want faces outside and inside, or a back outside and a face inside, or faces either way. So you're gonna kind of orient based on that, but in this case I want backs everywhere. Backs, backs, backs. So what we're gonna do, that is pretty even, and if you're doing this on the face side, basically an even space is just shortly below the uh, index. So whether, whatever letter or number is in the corner there, if you're face up, and if you're back up, the, uh, the baseline of the Christmas trees. So not this white line itself, but just about a millimeter shy of all of the tree stumps there is gonna be about where your fold line is gonna be. Pretty easy. So here we go. You're gonna put that there in a cross formation and we are going to fold. And you're just gonna hold everything in place and crease that over and then flip it around. You're gonna wanna make sure that this upper card is pulled tightly into that fold to make sure that everything stays in the appropriate spot and area. And we're going to fold that in, okay? And then we're going to flip that over and we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to fold over this flap and give it a nice crease. And we're going to fold over this flap and give it a nice crease. So that's what we are end up with now. Just four folds, two on each card. And now we're going to take this apart, <laughs> okay? So we pull those two halves apart and we're just going to reassemble them so that those folded flaps go on the inside so that we're left with a nice perfect square. And so to do that, you just slip that tab in there and kind of fold those pieces down. And then you're gonna tuck this in just like kind of a little tuck flap on a deck of cards or a cereal box. It can help to, to widen those a little bit first. And you're just gonna tuck that inside. Make sure you get around all those folds. Okay. And then if one other edge comes undone, that's fine. You just push it straight and so now you have these square walls just like that and so we are gonna make six of these I'll walk through this one more time really quick two cards per wall take your card here line it up fairly straight and centered as best you can fold that over same thing on the other side taking care to make sure this is pulled all the way into that crease Okay, flip the whole thing over, line that up, make sure it's fairly centered and straight, fold that over, fold that one over, make sure that all your creases are, are pressed firmly, take the two pieces apart, and then refold with your flaps to the inside. This is a lot easier to do when you're not talking through it. And the whole construction on this project, I should mention, is only gonna be about 10 minutes once you're just sitting and focused and doing it without talking about what you're doing. So there you go. There is 
another wall. And we'll be right back after we have all six of these. All right, so you can see that we have got our six walls here ready to go. And then with my remaining nine cards, so this takes up 12 of your cards, your remaining nine for your 21, you're just gonna fold each of those in half. So I went ahead and did that. Those are just nested there, but literally just folding it in half. Line up your corners and done. Doesn't get much simpler than that. And so now these are gonna be the joints that connect all the walls. Okay, and when you're assembling your walls, especially on a deck uh, here with borders, if you were doing this with something like the Honeybee deck that's borderless, the orientation really doesn't make uh, a big difference. And so on this one, we can either have it so that our corners are here with the borders, or we could do it like this, where the borders are going around the top. Neither way is right or wrong, it's just sort of whatever you prefer, or you could mix and match and alternate them as you go. Um, so just something to be aware of that you don't probably want to um, mix up your borders. You probably want to have them all lined up like this or all lined up like this. And I think today I'm going to have that, that border stripe go around the top and the bottom. So I'm going to link four of these to be my walls like so. I'm going to put these aside. Those will be my top and bottom. And this is really easy. You have these slots on all four sides now that you can just fit that folded card into. Just push it in, slide it on down. Grab another wall, push it in, slide it on down. Okay, grab another folded card, push that in. It may butt up with the other card that's in there. They're gonna meet in the halfway point, but if your folds aren't perfect, it'll be there, but you just kinda work it a little bit and it's gonna slide through. They'll overlap each other and that'll be fine. So now we're gonna need two of them over here so you can see really once you get rolling just how quick and easy this is Whoop. almost put that the wrong way that wouldn't be what we want in this case and then the last one slips right in there and right in there quick and easy there we go so those are our four walls and then inside, we have them like that. So now we just need to attach a top and a bottom. We'll grab one of these, doesn't matter which one. And we're gonna use four of these to attach the bottom. So we'll put our walls aside right there. Gonna slip four in here. Now if you want, as you go, you could do this slightly differently from what I'm teaching here, where you could put all four of these hinge pieces into the bottom and then attach the walls one at a time and connect the walls. Uh, there's really kind of no right or wrong way. This is the way I'm doing it here. But if you want to start that way and start with the bottom and then move on to the walls one at a time, be my guest. So that one's kind of hitting against the other card there, but you see we just kind of work it, pull it back and forth a little bit. And there it goes. And I'm gonna splay these outwards just a little bit so that it makes my life a little easier to work with this. Because now we're gonna take this and we want these four cards to simultaneously load into these four slots of the walls. So it helps if you kind of start with one as the bottom and then the two sides can kind of tilt in simultaneously. You get those lined up. Make sure that they're feeding into the actual slots and not just behind the card or anything like that. And depending on you and your folds, it'll just take a second to get that in there, push that all the way, and now we have a nice bottom one. Now if you wanna leave this as an open gift bag, you could fill this with M&Ms for your house guests or something and leave this with no lid. So this is perfectly fine and acceptable and looks wonderful. So you could be done right there if you want. In this case, we're gonna go kind of the gift box route. So we need one more. We're gonna create a little hinge on the top and have a, a door here. So we slip that one more right in there, one more right in there, and now we have this hinged top, okay? And now if you want, you could go really crazy and you could get some tiny little thin, strong magnets and put them in there and make a magnetic closure or something. And uh, like we talked about before, how you would need 
anywhere from 21 to 24 cards. This is a 21 card construction. Those extra three cards up to 21 would be placed here if you wanted to lock this lid down and basically make this a cube, which you could do um, and just have this be a solid cube and play catch with it or whatever you want to do or put a surprise gift in there and make it a little more difficult to open, a little less obvious and people could just kind of pull it apart. I kind of like it with the flapped lid. Um, something else you could do would be to take a, a needle and thread. Be careful if you do that. Don't poke yourself. Uh, but you could poke a hole through here and then run a little loop of ribbon or string or red or green yarn and have kind of a little uh, pull, top, pull tab on there to help open the lid and so that you know what the correct orientation is and that this is the top. Because in this case, all the sides look the same, so it'd be easy to just leave this sitting upside down and pick it up and have everything fall out. And you probably don't want that to happen. So the inside of this is about two and a half inches cubed, so you could fit a lot of different small gifts in there. Jewelry, or if you're the kind of person who gives vehicles as gifts, you could put the keys in there. Um, that's all up to you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that. And that is the Christmas gift box using the Christmas deck from Natalia Silva and Penguin Magic. All right, so now here are walls for one that I did where I want to have the outside not be the backs, but uh, I wanted to take advantage of all these ice skating penguins. So these are going to be my four walls. And then with the wreaths, I'm going to have one of these be the outer top and one of them be the inner bottom. So on the outside, the bottom will have the back design, and on the inside, the bottom will have the wreath, and on the top, the outside will have the wreath, and the inside will have the back. Uh, so we'll see what that looks like when it's all assembled. All right, so this is our finished box. We've got our penguins going around the outside here. And then I changed my mind slightly. I had the top and the bottom both be the wreath on the outside. Uh, because I thought that what I might do with this, rather than have it be a box... Oh, you can also see inside I did two of the penguins as kind of a double facer setup. So that we have a couple of reeds inside. So I have all four of my twos and all four of my fives represented. But with the fives I have two outside and two inside, just to give it a little variety. But what I was thinking was that I might add three extra closure cards here to seal this as a cube, and then I could take either a string or yarn or piece of ribbon or whatever and either have it come up through the center here or through the corner and make this into a Christmas ornament and hang it on the tree. So that would be another use for this. And so there you have it. That is one that is with faces on the outside rather than backs. Okay, so here are my two boxes side by side. We have the original one with all the backs, and then we have my one with the faces. I'm a fan of both of these. I would use both for different purposes. You could lock these together, and then the other thing is you can use more cards and create additional hinges. So you could make a two by, you know, a one by two, or a two by two, and just kind of continue to stack and build these and make a bigger box or a bigger ornament or kind of whatever you want to do. You could leave walls in between, you could leave a wall out so that this is big, or you could have them in this orientation where you leave this one out and your lid is on top so that you're here so that you have a tall skinny gift box. So there's really a lot of possibilities here. I hope you guys get creative. Obviously go through the deck. There's a lot of wonderful art in here with all the different faces. So choose the ones that are your favorite and make yourself or your loved ones a nice little Christmas gift box. We'll see you next time. Take care.